I'm Miranda with Recipe.com and today I'm going to show you how to make fresh tomato sauce. Now a good tomato sauce is at the heart of so many great meals. Pizza, pasta, sauteed vegetables or soups. So you can take advantage of the summer harvest by freezing a nice batch of this sauce and you'll be one step closer to a garden fresh meal. So I have our ingredients all laid out here, let's get started. We have four and a half cups of plum tomatoes, a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil, three quarters cups of chopped garlic, it's about two heads. Then we have four cups of diced onions, one and a half teaspoons of salt, a quarter of a cup of tomato paste, one teaspoon of dried oregano, a half a cup of red wine, two tablespoons of red wine vinegar, a half a cup of wonderfully fresh chopped basil, and then freshly ground pepper to taste. Now I have this large pot of water over here that's been brought to a boil. So what I'm going to do is with this paring knife, I'm going to start by coring the tomatoes. So just making a little incision at the top, I'm just going to kind of pop out literally the little core, this little stemmy part, just like that. So see, perfect. So get that out of the way. So that's what I did to the top. Now I'm going to score the bottom. So we're just going to make like a little X and we've scored the bottom. Now in batches, I'm going to transfer my tomatoes to the boiling water and I'm going to let them boil for 30 seconds to two minutes or until the skins have loosened. Okay, so my skins have loosened. I can start taking them out. I'm gonna use a slotted spoon. So you can see how the skin has split. This is going to make peeling these a breeze. So I am just going to give these a little ice bath. We are blanching these. I have a large bowl here with ice water and I'm gonna let them sit in here for one minute until they've cooled a little bit and I'm ready to handle them. Okay, so the next step, these have cooled. We are going to peel these. So I have this nice big bowl here and I have a sieve fashioned on top and using a paring knife, but honestly, I may not even really need it for this. They're coming off so well. We're just going to peel these and just let the peels fall into the sieve, so perfect. Now with the paring knife, we're just gonna cut this in half lengthwise, and I'm just, with my hand, like with a little, kind of like clipped little finger, I'm just gonna scoop out the seeds. Perfect. And then scoop again. So just kind of scoop this out. Make sure you get all the seeds out. And then through the sieve, you can put your these tomatoes to the side. You're just going to squeeze into the bowl kind of any any juice that you can out of these seeds and out of out of these skins and just kind of push those to the bowl below. And then I'm going to continue with the rest of our tomatoes. Okay, so look how much great juice I extracted from the seeds and the skins and then I just coarsely chopped these tomatoes and we're ready to set these aside because we are now going to heat our oil. So I've got this large um, pan back, or you could use a Dutch oven, whichever. So we're going to heat this, pop our garlic in, and stirring constantly, we're going to cook the garlic for about two to three minutes or until it starts to color and get really fragrant. Already it smells incredible. All right, now check out my garlic. It's starting to get some color here. Looks beautiful. Now we're going to add in the onions and the salt. And I'm going to pop a cover on this stirring occasionally, and I'm gonna let this cook until the onions are nice and tender, about 10 to 15 minutes. All right, check out our onions and garlic. They're wonderfully tender. The smell is just incredible in here. So I know that it is time to add in my tomato paste and the oregano. And I'm gonna cook this in here, also stirring occasionally, <clears throat> for about two to four minutes, or until the tomato paste begins to brown a little bit on the bottom. All right, look how nice and kind of coated the, the bottom is getting a little bit brown. Perfect. It's now time to add in the red wine and then the red wine vinegar. And we are gonna let this come to a simmer, which it's doing nicely already, until it reduces slightly, about two minutes. So that's reduced, it looks great. It is time to add in the tomatoes and that juice that we squeezed out. So we're still leaving the basil and the pepper for later. We've not forgotten about them. Look at that, no worries there. Let's give this a nice stir to incorporate everything. I'm gonna cover this, reduce the heat, and let it just gently simmer for about 25 minutes um, or until the tomatoes have mostly broken down. All right, so check out our tomato sauce. The tomatoes have broken down beautifully. This looks fantastic, smells even better. 
Did not forget about our basil. We're just going to sprinkle that right in. Give it a nice toss. Make sure our heat is off. Fantastic. I cannot express how good this smells, but I will stop trying because our very last step is to puree this. So depending upon the consistency that you like, you are going to either puree all of this in a food processor or blender. I'm going to use a food processor here. Or if you like your uh, sauce to be a little bit kind of chunky like I do, you'll just puree half like I'm about to do and then just mix the pureed part back in. Oh my gosh, so good, so exciting. And then you'll be good to go. So I'm just going to give this a few pulses. And if you're working with a food processor, always make sure that you pay attention to the line where it says max liquid line. Um, that is an important thing to note. And so you'll just do this in batches. But for me, because I want it to stay kind of chunky, um, I'm just going to just puree this little bit. Lift this up and I'm just going to add it right back in. Remove the blade. Look at that. Look how gorgeous. Now, I could have mixed even longer but that'll give it a really nice texture. This consistency is amazing. It smells fantastic. I'm so excited. So I'm going to enjoy some of this tonight, maybe over some pasta, then freeze the rest so I can enjoy fresh tomato sauce all year long.